It's a Brazilian paradox. Some of the ritziest beaches in Rio are flush up against the poorest places. Up in the mountain favelas, we take the easiest ascent, a steep road up, revealing tier upon tier of crudely built homes and businesses. Some call these drug-riddled, crime-soaked slums, but with the World Cup almost here, others see opportunity. We've come here to find out how much $50 will get you if you're coming to Rio for the World Cup and you want a real experience, one most tourists wouldn't dare. Hi. Hey, how are you? I'm Welcome Susan. to Vigigal. Thank you. So how many rooms do you have? There are 10 private rooms. Elliot Rosenberg is part of the gentrification creeping into Vigigal. He markets a favela experience. We're offering people a taste of the real Brazil. Rooms for rent in a house owned by a local NGO, not swank. This is the common area. But with one very attractive feature. Marvel at this incredible view we wow. have of the whole Vigigal favela, looking out onto the ocean and all the way even to Ipanema Beach at the end over there. A bit further up the favela, the view is even more dramatic. A few years ago, tourism would have been unthinkable. Armed drug gangs ruled, multiple killings in Rio's favelas every day. But that's changing, at least here. A lot of the guests we've had have said they feel safer inside the favelas than they do outside. It is a violent place, though. 50,000 homicides a year is sure, a sure. big number. It is. If it's any consolation, that, that violence is almost always between criminals or between criminals and police. Worth risking for the World Cup. <laughs> Brazil has hoisted the cup five times, hoping to make it six. At Rio's soccer shrine, tourists are caught up in the legendary Maracana Stadium with its half a billion dollar refit. But now, half of Brazilians have turned against hosting the World Cup. Not the game. These kids in the favela dream soccer. But they're cynical on how the cup will help them. What do you think of the World Cup coming to Brazil? Marvelous, marvelous. Very good. It's our pride, because we never have anything. Are you going to be able to see any games? They're expensive. Na rua também, na rua. <laughs> on the street, yeah, on the street. They can't afford tickets, let alone playing club soccer. Brazil spending a lot of money on the games. Is it worth it? No, no, no. No, no. no. It wasn't worth it. Because there are a lot of people suffering hospitals. People don't even care. You die and you're buried. We want real Brazilian improvement. Really? Even though you want the game here, you're still saying no too much money? Uh, they won't leave anything for us. If they were going to leave anything better for us, look at our field. These poor favelas share the mountainside with five-star hotels. With the cup and then the Olympics coming, Brazil started to neutralize them, sending in what's called Pacification Police, or UPP, to tame the night. Paulo Barbe is a 26-year-old sub-commander. He invites us on a patrol and tells us the drug lords here have been broken. Well, the problems we have are not criminal. Loud noise, husband and wife fights. In the past, those problems didn't reach our ears. Success, though, was violently earned. Their guns bigger than the enemies, with the residents caught in between. Tighter security means better boasting rights, with police keen to advertise that in advance of the World Cup. So no murder, no drugs here anymore? No, no murder. We don't have any murders. The drug trafficking does occur everywhere. But here we have the little ant traffickers, small, unarmed, and carrying small amounts of drugs. But most of Rio's 800 plus favelas are not so picturesque and not pacified. 
Teresa Williamson is an urban planner, a Brazilian who grew up in the U.S. and came back. It started out really promising. Uh, the UPP was this, the first attempt at police reform, really, in Rio after 200 years. But there's a long history here of mistrust and fear of police. Here in Rio, one in 23 people arrested is killed by the police. In the United States, that same statistic is one in 39,000. Where the most recent police uh, uh, entries are being called occupations rather than pacification. Here's what occupation looks like. Two weeks ago, a shootout over the arrest of a suspected teenage drug dealer. Up until this spring, gangs held the balance of power here over local police, so the state of Rio sent in the troops. Security is Brazil's biggest challenge. Most of the favelas are not like Vigigal. This is Mare, about 130,000 people in favelas close to the airport. And two months ago, the Brazilian army came here to secure it. 2,400 soldiers dispatched to wage war on a homegrown insurgency, complete with armored vehicles. Order and progress is the national motto, but at what cost? Moray is strategic, a favela close to three highways linking the international airport with Rio's wealthy center and its infamous beaches. Colonel so Alex Correa is, is the commanding officer. And our main mission here is stabilize the area, take out the traffic dealers and uh, coming back the peoples to normal life. The red one, it was a uh, Drug dealers. The black ones, shootouts with troops. So have the drug dealers just uh, hidden, hidden themselves now, waiting for you to leave? Hmm. Well, that's a good question. <laughs> that's a good question, but uh, I think so, yeah. And is this because of the World Cup? No, it's nothing about the World Cup. It's nothing about the World Cup. The timing suspect. The timing suspect, yes. So this is just one more operation. <laughs> A.F. Rodriguez doesn't buy that. He's a photographer, lived in Mare all his life, documenting its diversity. Over the last two years, he's captured the pacification and the protests leading up to this cup from the eyes of people living here. Like this man. The father was completely lost. He didn't know where to run to. There were too many shooties and bombs. His photos will be part of an exhibit in Germany called Who's World Cup? Why do you think the military is here if it's not to make your favela safer? Because there is an external community more important than us. The tourists. This is the eve of the World Cup. And in the heads of our leaders and the police, the most important thing is to create this fake sensation of security. But this security does not exist. The community outside the favela is more important than solving the problem, getting access to work or health. Soccer here is tough and tattered, while Brazil builds 12 mega stadiums across the country and sends in the troops to pacify threats to the beautiful game. Patricia Viena directs community programs in the favela. I think the population is very divided around Rio because of a lot of disappointments. They are not that excited about it. Do you think, uh, Patrice, that will change in the next few weeks as things get closer? Brazilians love soccer, so it might change just a little bit, but it won't be just like other World Cups. Only one thing can surely change the tide for Brazil's troubled cup, and that's a win. Susan Weston, CBC News, Rio de Janeiro.